Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another Unity networking tutorial. In this episode, we are going to deal with sending information from the server to the clients because we've done we've we've got the other way going on right now. What we've done in the last episode, we introduced commands. Commands are a way for a client to send a message to the server. This code here is called by a client, but only runs on the server. So that's a way to send commands to the server. However, we don't have anything going the other way around, going from the server to the client. Now, we do have a couple of things that are sort of automagically going from the server to the client. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that our player unit over here has this network transform script on it. And the way you can visualize this network transform script is like this. Um, this object is owned by a, per a particular player, in this case. Some of these objects will just be owned directly by the server, but this is an example of an object that's owned by a player. And the player can move this object. And what the network transform script does is during its update, I mean, I'm assuming, I haven't actually looked at the code, is it checks, hey, have I moved? Is my Basically, is my position different this frame than last frame? If it is, then what I do is I send a message to the server saying, hey, server, these are my new coordinates. And I'm allowed to do that because this object is owned by me, by this client here. So I tell the server, hey, server, I have moved to these coordinates. And then the server then goes and tells all the other clients that are connected to the server, hey, this object here is now at this position. And then all the clients get that message and say, oh, okay, so I'll move it physically over there. Um, and in fact, it's very likely that the this client here, the one that owns this player unit, also gets the message from the server that says, hey, this object is now positioned here, but I'm assuming the network transform script says, yeah, 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 don't worry about it. I've got control over my own position. In fact, I might be slightly ahead of you, so I'm just going to ignore the message from the server. However, some games won't ignore that message from the server because it's possible that you've done something that due to lag or whatever moved you into an illegal um, uh, position at which point the message from the server says oh you know you only thought you were here you're actually over here and that's what rubber banding comes from your your character will then rubber band or spring back to some previous location based on the message from the server. But this is all happening kind of automag automatically behind the scenes. The Networks Transform script is great, does a lot of, you know, works very nicely, um, but doesn't do anything we couldn't program on our own. Now, we're not going to start with trying to synchronize position. Instead, we're going to look at something considerably simpler and say something like, hey, our player over here, most people want to have a name in the game. So let's assume we want to be able to have a name for our players. So we're going to do that. We'll do something that we've done, say, lots of time. We'll set up some sort of variable. I'll make it public just so we can see it in the inspector, but it doesn't have to be public at all. Public string player name. And we'll have it be anonymous by default. Anonymous over here. Okay? Now, what you might do um, on, on sort of startup, like maybe literally during the start routine over here, is check, you know, some configuration file because someone went into their options and set some sort of username or something like that, and we copy it from there. Uh, but you also might want to be able to change it midway through a play session, right? You decide halfway through a game that you're going to change your name to something else. People do that all the time. So we want some sort of mechanic to do that. Now, I'm not going to build a big proper user interface to get this done. Uh, instead, in the update over here, I'm just going to say if input.getKeyDown uh, keycode.q. If you hit the Q key, then we're going to change our name to, um, let me do this, to Quill plus a random number from 1 to 100. There we go. So that's what we're going to want to change our name to. Now, I, because I'd like to do this in our tutorials, I'm storing a temporary variable, but then I'm just going to go ahead and directly set, say, player, player name to n. To n. Thank you. So we have changed player name to n. However, this action here is only running on our own personal computer on our own local machine. Because remember, update runs on everyone's computer whether they own this object or not. And that includes the server's copy of this. But then we're checking to make sure at this point that, hey, we are actually the local player that truly is supposed to own this object. Um, and then if we're not, we bail out. So at this point, only the client that owns this particular player connection is running this code. So we hit Q key, and we get named to Quill something. 
and that's all. The server doesn't know about it, and certainly the other clients don't know about it either. Now remember, if we're the host, we are both the server and the client, in which case, in this example, well, this player name would, would be present on the server because we're one and the same. But that might not be the case. In any case, certainly the other clients have no idea what the heck's going on. Now we can send this information to the server. We currently only have one command over here, and this command, command spawn my unit, doesn't take any parameters. But it doesn't have to be that case. We can actually pass parameters to the server. So we're going to make a new command over here, and this is going to be command um, change player name. And we're going to accept a string to this command over here. Now, you can't pass just any type of variable whatsoever um, using a command. Uh, you can do like integers and floats and strings. You can pass references to um, network identity um, components and things like that, and game objects that have network identity components. But there's there's it sort of ends there. There's support for some lists and things like that as well. But you can't just send just you know, sort of any dummy object you want in here. Um, because it might not know how to bundle that for, for the network, but that's not really an issue, um, you know, 99% of the time, and the other 1% of the time, you can make it work through a variety of other mechanics, but that's out of the scope of this particular video. So, we can send this command to change the player name on the server. So, okay, let's say, so the server's gotten a request to change a player name, so on the server, we're going to set the player name to be N. Excellent. So now, instead of setting our player name directly here, we're going to remove that. We're going to say command change player name. Boom. So let's put in a bunch of debug, debug messages here so we can see the flow of things. Debug log. So what I'm going to do is um, request um, sending the server a request to change our name to plus n. Okay. And then over here we'll have debug.log. And we'll just put in something like command player name plus n. Great. So let's give this a little quick test to confirm that we're working so far. Okay, we go here. Uh... Oh, get key down, not get button down, get key down. Because button down wants the string in our little... Um, it's over here if we go to uh, edits, project settings, input. Wow, that was laggy. It wants the, the string that represents the name of one of our axes. Whereas get key down just wants one of those key codes. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. So we're going to start the LAN host. Remember, in this case, this, this um, executable that's running inside the editor is going to be both the server and the client. So if I go and hit Q... We're going to see sending the server a request to change your name to Quill40, and then the server indeed respond, re receives the request to change player name to Quill40. And if we actually click on the player connection object, we can see that this player's name is now Quill40. We see that because we are the server, and the server is changing its copy of player name to that. However, if we were running two windows, and one of them was the server, it would now say uh, the player name is Quill40 for this object, but the other thing, which is just a client, would not have that information. So now what we need to do is tell all the clients what this uh, player's name now is. Now there's two ways to do this. One is to use a sync bar. We're going to come back to that. Sync bar, far more convenient um, for something like this, most likely, but we're going to start by implementing an RPC. So Whereas commands are functions that you call from a client that executes on the server, right? I am on the client over here. This, in this case, the client is also the server, but I'm on the client over here and I'm telling the server to either spawn our unit or I'm telling the server to change our player's name. The server can run a function on clients and these are RPCs. Let me go and just copy this. So I can do dat RPC. An RPC, um, there, we'll, we'll mirror the thing. RPCs are special functions that only get executed on the clients. 
and they work very much like command. You do the square bracket tag. Now, do not use just RPC. This is from the old, old networking system and, and various things. Instead, you want to use client RPC, the client RPC tag, and you're going to write a function. And just like how with command, all the functions have to start with CMD, in this case, all the commands have to start with RPC. Um, so this would be change player name. We'll use the same the same signature basically. We don't have to. They could be called this could be called RPC Bob. Doesn't matter. But we'll do that. String n. And so now um, debug.log RPC change player name. Uh, we were asked to change the player name on a particular um, player connection object. It might be our own object. Basically, the server's coming back and saying, yep, you can totally use that name. Or it might be someone else's player's connection object, and we're just being told what their new name is. So we'll put the colon space plus n, n, or n thank you. And then what we're going to do is change player name to be equal to n. Now, in the case where we're being a host, where we're both the server and a client, this player name will be set twice. It'll be set once from the point of view of the server, and it'll be set again from the point of view of the client. That's totally okay. There's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you could check to see if we've already updated or something like that, but this will work. And so here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this RPC change player name to N, um, or, you know, to the new player name. But here's an interesting thing is we could do something like, uh, maybe we should check that the name doesn't have any blacklisted words in it. You know, maybe you don't want to allow people to use, you know, bad words in their usernames, something like that. So we could go and verify whether or not that's the case. And then we get an interesting decision. Um, if there is a bad word in the name, uh, do we, I should just move this around. Do we just ignore this request and do nothing? Or do we still call the RPC, but with, but with, oh my God, the original name. Okay. Now, for the player name change, it's probably be fine to just return immediately and do nothing. But depending on what you're doing, it's possible that to avoid lag, because right now when we want to change our name, there's going to be a little bit of lag. Because what we do is we send the player request to get the name change. The, the server then analyzes it. And then the server sends back a response and says, okay, here's your new name. That Now that's going to happen relatively quickly, fast enough that for a name change, it's effectively, you know, it's going to feel pretty instant, but there's lots of things like shooting bullets, or maybe, maybe you're, you're moving with a slightly different, you know, um, you're not using the network transform to move. You want to do different things for movement or whatever. And it might be nice to have your local client take your action immediately. You know, your local client wants to take the action immediately and then also send a message to the server to say, by the way, I'm doing this thing. And then the server might okay it or not okay it or make a change like you might be trying to move to a location and the server is like well you can move part way but then there's actually you don't realize it but there's an invisible object here blocking your movement so you didn't actually complete your whole move like you think you're here instead of there or some damn thing you know you're moving around on um on a map and you triggered a trap that someone laid there you couldn't see it so you didn't realize you couldn't go all the way, but at, me as the server have to tell you, oh, by the way, you got snagged over here. And so you have to sort of like just rubber band a little bit on your screen to go backwards. So you have the, if you do it that way, you have the advantage of getting instant movement on your local client. So it doesn't feel laggy, but every now and again, the server might be like, whoa, 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 back up a second here. Um, this, this other thing actually happened. It, it depends entirely on what kind of game you're doing and what kind of action this is if you want to have it perform immediately. Anyway, the point is, if you were to perform the action immediately on the client of whatever it is, whether it's a name change or whatever, and it turns out that it's an illegal action, we might still want to call the RPC. Like if it's an illegal move, we could just ignore it, or we might still want to call the RPC, but with the, the right data so that the client gets told what the actual proper thing is. But that'll depend on what kind of action you're doing. Anyway, um, I think if we do this, um, we can now hit play 
And so again, we're both the client and we're both the server and the client. If I hit Q, we'll see the entire chain of events going on. Sending the server a request to change our name. The server has received the command change player name, and it is then calling the RPC. And we can see here, RPC change player name. We were asked to change the player name on a particular object, Quill 47. So now if we check player connection object here, we are now Quill 47. And even if there were a hundred different clients connected, they would all see that this particular player connection object now has the name Quill 47. Now, that works great. And in fact, no matter what we do, this is pretty much how it's going to work. But for something as simple as updating a variable, it might not feel like, okay, this RPC feels a little cumbersome. It works fine, but is there a neater way to do it? Well, in fact, there is. There's something called sync vars. Now, if we go back to our player name over here and we give it a little sync var tag, okay? Sync vars are variables where if their, their value, come on, value changes on the server, then all clients are automatically informed of the new value, okay? Now, um, unless I'm wrong, and I'm never wrong, changing the value of, say, player name on a client would do nothing. I mean, the client would have, you know, this this variable will be changed. You know, we've, we've changed it to Mr. Poo, Poo Head or whatever it is on the client. So from that client's point of view, that value has changed, but that value would never get sent to the server or the other clients. So effectively, it wouldn't be true and if at any point the server decided to update player name then you would be told what the the new and correct player name would be and it would overwrite whatever you did locally so as far as i know if a client tries to set something on, on a sync var nothing happens so we still need the step where we send the request to the server but now on the server the second we hit player name equals n it will automatically tell all the clients that the value has been changed. So we no longer need to call this RPC. And in fact, we can take this entire bit of code and just comment it out. Let's see if that works. So, well, actually here, it's not a really good test because we're going to hit play and we're going to hit host and I'm going to hit Q. And I mean, it sends the request to name it to Quill9, but we're going to see that. But remember, this is both the client and the server. So for all we know, it does have a little sync var node over there, which is neat. But for all we know, we're just seeing the fact that this was set locally. So I think it's time for us to actually run. We're going to go build and run. Chuka, 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 chuka. Chuka, chuka. I'm going to run a standalone copy of the game and have it be the server. Again, it could be a host or it could be a dedicated server. doesn't make a difference in this particular case. Come on, you can do it. All right. So we're going to hit play. We're going to get a little cutscene, And so this thing is going to start up as a host. Okay, so it's connected to itself, excellent. And then over here, I'm gonna connect as a client. There we go, so we're in there. We've got two player connection objects. We've also got two player units, but we're not caring about that. Now, if I go here and I hit Q, then this client here is sending a request to the server. Please server, change my name to Quill11. Note that I don't have a debug log entry here from the command because the command only runs on the server. In this window here, if we were um, somehow displaying the debug console, we would see the message. We would actually not see the message of sending the server a request to change our name to Quill11. Instead, all we would see in here is the command player name um, Quill11. We would see the message that some client has asked to change the thing. And in here, it's setting player name equal to Quill11, which is a sync var. And so assuming everything has gone correctly, over here, there we go. This player connection object is now called player Quill, Quill 11. This one is still anonymous, but this one over here, which is the one that actually belongs to us and sent the message to the server, is now called Quill 11. So it happens automagically in the background with the sync var. And so you don't have to explicitly write these RPCs. But as far as I know, in the background, what's actually happening with a player, with a sync var, is that it's sort of actually um, Unity is making the RPC that does this on your behalf. Now, what if we wanted to do something 
What if we wanted to do something special when some of these values changed? There could be lots of reasons to do it. Uh, let's say it was, um, let's say the player units had health. So when the health goes down, when the value of sync, the, 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 the sync var value of health goes down, we want to like put a spray of like red negative marks around the, the character. Or if it went up, we want to put a bunch of green plus marks around the character to show that the value of health changed. Again, we could do it with just an RPC for the health change instead of a sync var, and it would explicitly do it. But we actually can still respond to changes on a sync var. And we can do that by saying that this sync var is actually going to have a function hooked into it. So, and I never get the syntax quite right, so I'm just double checking that I've got a window open for the hook, and I actually don't, so that's awesome. Uh, sync var hook, because I just always sort of goof the, um, there we go. Don't always get the syntax exactly right with the uh, the commas or the, the parentheses. So you do sync var parentheses hook equals, and then you put in a function name. Um, I don't think it has to be a function name. I think it could be uh, just a name. Let's say we make a function here. This is just going to be a generic function. Um, on player name changed string new name there you go debug dot log on player name changed plus new name new name thank you like that so we're gonna put in a hook here that says when the player name changes call this function now let me check to see if that works as is yeah, it does have to be a string. Okay. Oh, it could be delegate things. It's predefined. Okay. But for now, we can just have the hook be like that. That's why I keep getting confused, because you can do things with delegates. But there we go. So we put in the name of a function to call when something happens. So on player name change, I'm actually going to go and add a little bit more uh, in here. Um, old name is going to be... And then new name is going to be... So player name like this. Okay. So when the player name is changed, we will get this debug log in here. And then we could do something else. We could be something like, um, oh, how about game object dot name? We want to rename our game object to um, player connection object square brackets. And in the square brackets, we want to... Um, put in the, new, the player name. Well, the new name. Like this. Okay, let's give that a run. Now, I believe there is something slightly wrong with this. We'll see if what happens. Um, I don't think it'll be obvious if we're the host. So we're going to hit host. And I'm going to hit Q. So remember, we are both the client and the server. So the client says the message, hey, I want to change my name to Quill68. Quill the server receives the message that says, oh, someone wanted to change it to Quill 68. I'm just setting player name equals Quill 68. Um, oh, it is going to do it that way. That's very neat. Okay. So then on player name changes, we see our old name was anonymous and our new name is Quill 68. The player connection object gets renamed to Quill 68. And the player name field is Quill 68 here. However... I believe, I might be lying to you, but I believe that this is not quite work right if we are not the server. Let me check. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't quite work right. But I'm, we'll see. It just depends on whether um, the values update after the hook or not. So we have the server running in the standalone window. I'm going to connect it as a client. I'm going to hit Q over here. There we go. So I sent a server request to change our name to Quill72. Uh, and we received the on player name change hook triggered old name anonymous, new name Quill72. And if we look perfect, if we look here, the name of our object is now player connection object Quill72. But if we look in the inspector, notice our player name still says anonymous. Okay, and this is something that is not super clear in the documentation. But if you use a hook 
Warning! If you use a hook on a sync var, then our local value does not get automatically updated. Does not get automatically updated. Now, when we were both the client and the server, when we were in host mode, our local value did get updated because, remember, we're running this code over here. This code over here called the hook first, but it's still edge, uh, executed on its own. So on the server, which was also the client in that example, the player name did get updated to quill68 or whatever it was. But on the client over here in on player name change, it doesn't auto update, which means if we aren't the server, we have to go and explicitly, explicitly set player name equal to new name. Okay, maybe maybe we should put the the warning inside of here. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it's possible that this could create an infinite loop if we are both the server and the client. Because think about it, and I'm not sure, we're gonna test it in a second. If I actually am the server, is this gonna spawn an infinite series of sync vars? Just in a loop that just keeps saying, oh, I've changed the player name, oh, I've changed the player name, oh, I've changed the player name. Let's, let's give it a test and see what happens. Um, I can close this, and over here we can disconnect. So let's see what happens if we're both the client and the host and we change the name and see if it makes an infinite loop. Oh, it doesn't. That's interesting. Um, but it does correctly update everything. So what I'm assuming then is that while you're in a hook, it must disable the sync var behavior. Or it checks for some sort of duplication. What happens if I, if I set this to like... Blah, 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 blah. What happens then? I'm just very curious to see if we were breaking this or not. So it either disables the, the sync var. Huh. Now if we check, and it still sets this afterwards because we're on the server. I think if we were on a client, our player name value would now be blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we have to explicitly accept this. And this is important because we may, for some reason, we may not want to update this on a client. We may not want to update this value with exactly what we got from the server. Now, most of the time you probably will, but if we're talking about position changes, right? And again, I'm pretty sure when you're talking about the built-in network transform script, it's working basically like this or with an RPC, but our local client that is in charge of this object, when it gets the message from the server about our new position, I don't think it listens to the server directly. Instead, it's sort of like mismatching things. Even actually, even if it's not our local client, the network transform might not immediately update the position of the object with the instructions for the server. Instead, it might do a lerp from one position to another to make it look smoother and different things like that. In fact, it, it does try to keep a smooth looking um, change in position here. So it's important to be able to have the option to override this behavior. But yeah, if you have a hook that's tied in you know, over here to our sync var, if you're using a hook, then by default, it won't update your local variable. You're going to have to do it explicitly. This doesn't really apply on the server because you're doing it anyway and yada, yada, yada. But there you go. So those are a couple of different ways that you can send information from the server to the client. And quite frequently, the information that you're sending from the server to the client was actually initiated by yet another client. You can do it with an RPC and you can do it with a sync var. Now, in terms of actual amount of code, if you are using a hook on a sync var, then that's probably exactly the same as an RPC. Because think about it, what's going on here, right, is basically exactly the same as if this were just an RPC. It's like basically the same thing. In fact, I suspect that internally, it literally is the same thing. That the sync var is just calling an RPC, and that's all there is to it. And so when you put a hook, you're basically just writing that. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't know if there's a way to get um, past here 
I, I think that on a hook, you can't say find out who initiated this change. Whereas if you had an RPC, you could actually like pass a reference to the person who initiated this RPC call if it didn't come directly from the server, in case that matters for some reason. Um, but there's other ways to just bundle this information in there. So anyway, <sighs> lots of talking for not a lot of code, but again, the, the, the normal, the, the tutorial that Unity provides for the multiplayer is very fast, but doesn't go into some of the nitty gritty as to some of the side effects of sync vars and RPCs, as well as some of the different uses for it. And again, remember the neat thing is there's no reason that you have to use a network transform script. Even if you're talking about controlling your player in a first person shooter or something like that, or any object that's moving in your unity space, you don't have to use a network transform. You could communicate the change in movement via your own RPC call because maybe your movement works a little bit differently. What if you're playing a board game? If you're playing, if your game is a board game, you don't have to sync the network transforms at all. Instead, maybe it's just like, you just say, oh, um, you're moving the knight to E4 I, or whatever. I, I don't do chess notation. So literally you can just move objects by passing the string. That is the E4 or, or whatever the coordinates on the chessboard is. And then each client is responsible for animating the move based on that user's own personal preference. Right? Maybe one user likes the moves to be like fully animated, you know, like a nice slow slide from one location to another. But someone else just wants the units to instantly teleport from point A to point B. In which case, you don't want to use the built-in network transform to synchronize the motion in exactly the same way for anyone. All you want to do is send each client and say, this piece that was here is now over here. You deal with it however you want. And I mean, that can include sending just a vector, right? You're, 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 your RPC could involve sending a vector three with the new position. You could again, still deal with the animation any way you want, but it could be handled in a million different ways as well. So being able to overwrite those behaviors through clever use of RPCs and sync bars is great. Um, I, I partially don't like the magic of sync bars, especially with the hook and this sort of like weird timing where like, Oh, you can sort of get screwed a little bit. Um, sync bars are convenient. But I like the explicitness, of, or the explicitness of RPCs. This is, hey, this thing explicitly happened. Now you got to do something with it, which might include updating your local variable. So, like, I like, I like this version of it because it's so much more like super clear, and there are no side effects. But for simple syncing of values where maybe you don't even need hooks, a sync var is pretty convenient. Not gonna lie. Thanks for watching. See you next time, folks. Bye bye. Thank you to all the January Patreon supporters and these mic check supporters. Uh, Yukofin, Lurking Ninja, Dubiouser Curl, Tiburon, Mighty Mix, Pavel Zdanov, Adam Keenan, Michael McClintock, Aaron Dobson, Rarskal, Gurko Dries, Jesper Bisgard, Julien Gelafon, Soren Tried Anderson, Marisfield Vold, Speedy Savant, Steven Steger, Thomas Oberson, Jason Yanity, Easter Egg Productions, Neil Blakey, Milner, and everyone who watched, shared, favorited, and subscribed. Thank you so very much.